it's Paul Valencia, Clark County today, sports reporter or whatever reporter, whatever I am. I don't know. My, my role's changing. Go right, jack, jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. It's Tony Liberator from Fort Vancouver High School. Go Trappers. And Vancouver Public Schools. And then we have Kale Pyland, the athletic director for all Evergreen Public Schools. Yeah, I wish it was as cool as you make it sound, but yeah, and it's a lot of fun, man. I, I try. Fun. I yeah. try to make yeah. you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, we are uh, wrapping up spring sports on this podcast. We've got a lot, lot to talk about. Uh, so we got Columbia River baseball winning it all. We got Scholastic Cup information and breaking news. Tony says that Columbia River might have finished second, not third. So yeah, we'll, we'll figure well, that out. In a I don't know if that's breaking, but <laughs> Tony can do math. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I didn't even do the math. I just looked yeah. at the point total on the, on the, what? They already did the math for it. Well, you did the subtraction. And yeah. they're like, yes. doesn't, yeah. doesn't the there you go. team with the so, school with more points finish ahead of the yeah. team with less points? Yeah. There's that. We might talk about bad sports in high school sports in Washington. We'll, we might get into that a bit. And then also, uh, yeah, a former uh, uh, Skyview legend might be going for the Olympics again, and that's really kind of news in the last week or so because she was retired. <laughs> so that's going to be kind of cool. We'll get into that, and then uh, and then your Mariners. We have to talk about your Mariners. Thank you. Yeah, because just I mean, don't don't jinx them, Paul. <laughs> don't jinx them. <laughs> so they haven't won the AL West yet. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ooh, a long way, long to go. way to go. All right, so let's. Uh, so yeah, last time we we uh, met for this podcast was the week be, you know of state championship week. So we knew we had some chances of special teams doing some great things. We're gonna get to Columbia River baseball in a bit, but also Camas Boys soccer finished second in state. Congratulations to the papermakers. Uh, you know, it'd been a while since they made a run. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they used to be they used to, you know all every year that you know you can pencil them in for at least the quarterfinals and and so so they're they're back on track as Camas uh, soccer. And then uh, what? Seton Catholic softball. That was kind of a surprise. I mean, I think they have, I think they have eighth graders on their team. Actually, you know, they, they, they might. They, you know, they, they, good. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the, the very very young team, and they got hot at the right time and made it to the finals before they lo- they lost. But uh, congratulations to them. And of course, we have a lot of individual sports that uh, athletes that did great too: track and field, tennis, golf, things like that. But but for team sports, Columbia River won it all. Tony. I know you're a Fort Vancouver guy now, but <laughs> what is your history with Columbia River? I mean, how far back do you want me to go? Yeah, so, let's, let's, well, you are. Um, you the are. last time Columbia River won a baseball state title was my senior year in 1989, and that was in the Kingdom. Yeah, and we, I had a couple of classmates hit home runs out of there. Yeah, and here's what we always remember about that title is because in '87 and '88 there were two River pitchers. That went to Stanford, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then they they couldn't just get couldn't get past the semis, and then the year they are out, they just Spence, seeding Spencer and, and Doliak S- S- Dorlark, yeah. So those guys, right. and and just coincidentally that year, Stan Spencer as a freshman at Stanford, uh, won the title the College World Series clinching oh, game. Interesting, and but he was teammates of Mike Messina. So, so Messina was the horse. So, anyways, go if you go back a little bit, yeah, that's that's my Columbia River baseball so, story. So Columbia yeah. River baseball is like Tennessee football. Peyton Manning leaves, and then they win the national title. Like, so, so, wow, <laughs> yeah. wow, okay, a little bit. Okay. I did not expect this podcast to go there. You just but, never know. But where then we're I worked with Coach ball. Donahue forever, then, right? And but then, then also, yeah, yeah, then you became yeah later on, not yeah. probably not the not probably not in 1990, but later on you right. became athletic director at Columbia River, <laughs> right? And uh, here's what I remember. I've been covering Columbia River baseball since I've been in the area because they're always good. Yeah. I mean, 20 years now, they've always been good. And they've come so close. But I, I was shocked. I went, wait a minute. They never won one in that time. And I know I have memory loss as I'm getting older. I'm like, holy cow, I've watched this. You know, they made it to the semis. They made it here or they made it to the finals a couple of years ago. But they hadn't won one. And so I'm so happy for Coach Donahue. He's a, yes. a great guy. He's been there forever. And um, so, congratulations, Donu. And, and yeah, and but there's just a lot of things that happen in that game. Well, I call I called it the slide when I wrote the story. I called it the slide. Yeah, uh, it's Charlie Palmersheim. I hope I'm saying his name right. Yeah, but um, he was out by a mile. It was the, the throw <laughs> beat him. The throw beat him by a long way. And this slide to get 
to get safe at home plate. And it was a great call by the umpire because he was safe. The, the tag was not made. So I call it the slide. And there was also a great video of the coaches celebrating. We're going to get to talk about that a bit. And a great picture by an old friend of mine named Kim Blau. And thank you for allowing us to use that great photo, Kim. But, yeah, I, I guess um, – so if you yeah if you didn't see the slide I'm going to tell you what I was doing and as parents you guys will understand I was in Ashland Oregon on championship weekend because my daughter was with a school trip for her senior year and I was helping out with that and so if you're a parent you're gonna you're you're not gonna miss senior year stuff and so I know as a sports writer I I'm very focused on state championship weekend well. At Clark County Day, I can't. I'm, I'm the only guy. I can't go to three places at once. We had championships at the same time at three yeah. different locales, so it didn't matter if I was in my home office at home or in Ashland. But we ended up going to a coffee shop in Ashland, and I put on my computer and watched all three games at once. So it was a lot of fun. Well, the other two games, it was pretty clear that Camus was going to fall and Seton Catholic was going to fall, but Columbia River still had a chance. So I'm watching live on that uh, what top of the seventh inning. Yeah. They're down two to one. They tie it, and then to get the winning run was char- char- this incredible slide. But even on my little computer screen, you could see the ball being by 100 miles. Right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, gosh, okay. Well, they sent him. He's going to be out, and it's going to be tied at least. But makes this slide, and it's just wow. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll, we'll get into that. But I just got to ask my, my, my colleagues here, what's like one of your favorite plays from your favorite team, because this will always be one of the greatest plays in Columbia River baseball history. But for sure, for like your favorite team, Kale or, or, or Tony, doesn't matter what sport. What's your favorite play? Oh, I don't. I don't know if I have a favorite team. I think, um, obviously, with the 2004 Evergreen team, uh, there, there there are a lot of plays mm-hmm. uh, there. But I think probably the most um, emotional celebratory play to uh, <clears throat> to win a game would have been the quarterfinal game with Union against Ferndale. Oh, yes. Uh, when Dex Homer yep. blocked uh, a, a potential game-winning field goal, and uh, Mitch Saylor just happened to be right there with the ball. And it was the old carpet turf, so the ball just took a nice big bounce right, right, right. into his belly, and uh, he was able to take it back for, mm-hmm. uh, for the game-winning touchdown. So yep. that was – that that was um, crazy because we were already planning for overtime. I mean, and it was it was a crazy long field goal. Yeah, that they, 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 they were, were never going to make the field goal, but but it was still yeah, so. Still like awesome I mean, we play. were almost more <laughs> concerned about a fake than than them actually trying to attempt it. But then when they did, and Dex uh, got off the ball, and made a nice play. The the thing that was interesting about that play was though there was still time left on the clock. Uh, and so fans, and we still didn't, we didn't have the security fencing at McKenzie at that time. So our kids came out of the stand like they were ready to rush the field, but the game was not over. We mm-hmm. had to kick off, and uh, so Ferndale went into this, you know, the crazy laterals. You know, the Stanford play, band is on the field type of type of attempt. <laughs> that play took forever. To it did. Them. It did. And, and, and you know, they, they they did a great job with it. And so you're just you're know, like, no, 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 come on, this can't happen this way. <laughs> <laughs> type of deal, and then, but yeah, so we finally got the tackle on the uh, after after that return, and uh, yeah, that was just as far as kind of a, um, you know, the emotion was pretty raw, and that was I mean, we were that was our second year in existence, so that was you know we were going to go to the dome for the first time as a program, and that was that was right. pretty exciting. By the way, a bird flies. I'm going to guess half a mile, maybe three quarters of a mile. I live. For, yeah, that's how close I am to McKenzie Stadium. Yep. My wife in in the living room, not outside, in the living room. Heard the roar, and it was the loudest I've ever heard. McKenzie I was Stadium. at that game. It was yeah, yeah. it was the loudest I've ever heard. The, the the block, and then the scoop and score, and the crowd. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about just how loud that was. We we talk a lot about how Doc Harris is an incredible experience, but I've never in Clark County had a louder moment than that play that, that I've experienced. A yeah. louder, oh my God, crowd moment. And the, I'm glad you. I, I totally. I didn't forget about the play, but I sure. didn't think you were going to say that. I you know, but. Uh, yeah, that was pretty special. Tony, what do you mean? Right, well, just – Because it could be pro or high yeah, school well, or whatever. Yeah, well, a couple of things. Just as a young assistant, um, a couple of uh, football games beating Kelso up there when River versus Kelso was mm-hmm. usually for the league title. Yeah. And winning at Kelso was – that was huge for us. Um, so there's those games. I can remember a couple of individual per- uh, performances. Uh, didn't have a, a, a great as the season as we anticipated, but Neil Daly – um, up at uh, Seattle Memorial Stadium mm-hmm. under the Kingdom, he 
threw for 300 and rushed for 200 as a quarterback. Okay. I'm trying to remember who we beat. Yeah, under and the that, spa- Space Needle. Yeah. Yeah, what I say. Under the kingdom. You said under the kingdom. No, I, I, me- like, I meant sub- this. Subterranean Memorial. Yeah, yeah. I meant the Space Needle. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. My, my Seattle landmarks. Yes. Um, which, but by then, the, which, by the way, they're, they're redoing that stadium, by yes, the way. Yes, yeah. yes. But then. The kingdom? <laughs> no. Well, because you were asking about, <laughs> yeah, you know, about kind that. of yeah. in, in your, uh, you know, your notes. Um, you know, any Mariners fan, the 95. Uh, yeah. Edgar oh, yeah. Martinez, game five, the double. Okay, yeah. what do they call that play? The, I was, the, the double. The, the, the double. double, but it's Griffey going from first to home. Griffey yep. scores the winning scoring, run first to home. Running like a deer. I mean, just yep. oh, he's, the, it's the fastest he's ever run. I mean, he's fast anyway. He's a great Ken Griffey. Yeah, but, yeah. but I think he put it into another gear. There's There are some clips, it's, and it's not very good because they didn't do it like that in 95, but where you can – you get the double and then they – you know, have a another clip of Griffey, but yeah, he he's hauling. Yeah, it's and because he can, I mean, he knows that it's a hit from the get go, right? right? And it, worst comes to worst, very similar to River, it's a tie game. Yeah, so, yeah. So because I asked Dono about that, and he says because it's tied, that's why I sent him. That, that yeah, getting back to la- a couple weeks yes. back when River wins it all, it's two to two. So put the pressure yes. on the defense. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what. And here's the thing: is the defense the guy threw the ball perfectly? It was just well, and I wonder, two, you know, and. Yeah. It's hard to, you know, that's a yeah. bang bang play, and mm-hmm. you know, just where the the catcher went, because yeah. he had to he had to move back far to he did, well, and, and but again now Charlie had an angle, that yes, was not, and he anticipated that, and you yeah. can see that, and you know, and I haven't got into the details of Donald because yeah. I wonder how he cut third. Well, it right? was not. It was not how you coach. Dono, Dono's told me that it was not a great line to <laughs> mm, home, mm. but you know what? But it, it helped. Worked. It helped, that and that's angle. what I mean. That, yes, that angle. Catcher turned to ta- make the tag at a normal place, yes. and he wasn't there. So he had to kind of reach out for him, yep. and by that time it was too late. But so it was, it was just, cool. The and, greatest slide yeah. I've ever seen yep. in, 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 you know, when you consider the moment. And so uh, uh, and that's why I call it the slide, and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know what else. I mean, it's boring. I, I don't know if it's boring, but – Tells the story, yeah. So and, for sure, uh, and uh, that that was just so incredible. But there, you know, but yeah. Anyway, so congratulations again, Columbia River. But there was another thing. Um, so so we got the slide, and I'm going to get to the picture in a second. There's also a video. Uh, Coach Corey Kier, Cor- Cor- who coached with Coach Donahue for for many years, twelve he, to fifteen, and he was the head coach of Columbia River before Dono. So he, yeah. You know, so th- they've been friends forever, and I love that he took a video of the final out. But he just kept it focused on his friend and coach. So it's in the dugout where all the coaches are hugging mm, each other. Mm-hmm. And you, we know none of us. I mean, I'm I, you know as a sports journalist for all these years, I'm always looking at the players. I'm looking right. at their reaction. If I am taking video with my phone, I'm usually, I don't no, no offense to the coach, I'm focusing on the athletes. But I wanted to ask you guys, uh, you know, seeing seeing that moment with Donahue on the video is so special. I saw it on Facebook, and he'll keep that video forever. Yes. And it was just really neat. And after all the close calls they've had, so they finally won one. And that was great that it was captured. But, yeah, Kale and Tony, t- Kale, you've won a state title as a coach. What's it like for the coaching staff, not not just the athletes? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of emotion um, in camaraderie. I mean, it's just you, you really feel like – um, you know, you've been through a lot of things together and, and, you know, when you see all of that work come to fruition, um, but then I always, you know, in those, if we're going back to the, the O four team, I kind of tried to stay away from as much of the, the glitz and the, like the photos and whatever, like, cause I really wanted it to be about the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, but yeah, there's, there's definitely some emotion um, and, and uh, a lot of bro hugs going on, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, it's just it's uh, especially. I mean that one because nobody from down here had done it yet, uh, you know. So there was there had been, I don't know if it was a sense of disbelief, but I think there was just a lot of like until somebody until a big school from Clark County did it. Yeah. I mean, could a big yeah. school from Clark County do it? And so there was there just were a lot of emotions mm-hmm. for sure. Tony? Well, it's you go back to the the video initially. Corey sent that to me before he posted it mm-hmm. because you know we just we you know just knowing each other forever. And Corey was on that staff for a long time, and mm-hmm. um, now he's the head coach at Mount Hood. Uh, but I, I mean, just there's former players on the staff, and just you know I I was teasing Dono. I sent him 
um, the the gif of the Shawshank Redemption when Andy uh, Dufresne when he comes yes. when he cr- crawls through you know what yeah. and mm. the rain and I and he just said that's appropriate because I Dono had come close so many times mm-hmm. as a head coach and had you know that Tumwater loss a couple years ago yeah you know the drag bunt or whatever it was mm-hmm. and so but my own um, as AD um, when River Girls soccer won in gosh was that 2016 I guess it was. Being pick, being able pick to pick a year with Columbia River well, there's, now. there's that right, but, yeah. <laughs> but um, just because I had to, I had to, you know, they had all those home games, and I, you know, I was there and I followed them, and I went up to it, and Philly does a good job of, um, obviously with the the kids, but he made me feel like I didn't have any part of the coaching, but he just made me feel at that that those four weeks of playoffs, he made me feel like a part of the staff, and so uh, they won in that shootout and. Mm-hmm. You know, so that I mean, that was cool to see yeah. um, as AD and how close that staff was, and they still are. You know, they're still very successful, so that was cool. So, from one uh, video that captured a moment, I'm going to go to a photo. And uh, Clark County today, we were given permission from photographer Kim Blau to use this really great photo, and it's right after the the, the slide. He's safe. The catcher's sprawled out, you know, just stretching. But in the background, Dono who was the third base coach, head coach of the team, third base coach, he's doing the safe sign before the umpire can even make the safe sign. Right, it's, yeah. And I, it's just, to me, it's such a great photo because it shows the winning run. It shows the coach and his emotion who doesn't show much emotion. <laughs> Dono right. doesn't show mm-hmm. much emotion. And it's just one of those, like, incredible photos. And I right. just wanted to say thank you, Kim Blau. Kim Blau, professional photojournalist from years ago. Yeah. Who, Worked at the Columbian, and um, she stopped being a photojournalist. I think she does studio work now, but but she's also a team mom at Columbia River. Yeah. So she was she brought her stuff up, and and uh, she she gave us permission to use that photo. And that photo is just one of the my all time favorite sports photos. And I know what do they call it recency bias? Uh, you know, <laughs> I think in twenty years from now I'll be remembering that photo. Right. That's I cool. Just, so Kim, thank you for that photo. Just Good one deal. last trivia on that. Dono told me today that. Charlie reached first base on a strikeout. Oh, yeah, yes, he did. Yes. So you know, just all those things that when you think of, you know, when you talk about the luck breaking your way in, mm-hmm. a, in a title game, and that's just one of those things, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't because that you don't give up when you strike when you have strike three. Dono ball. said that <laughs> pitcher was not he was not tiring out. He was still throwing low nineties. Yep. In the seventh, and had a had a curveball that on the strike three that yep. went through the catcher's legs, and he was able yeah. to get to first. Right. So there you go. Wow, that's incredible. Yep. Whew. All right. So, with that, so Columbia River did that, and uh, then it was announced uh, a few days later. They the WIA put together all of the points for the entire school year to come up with their Scholastic Cup championships. And I'll be honest, when Scholastic Cup came out, what many many years ago? I don't even know. I don't even know when they started doing it. But yeah, I don't either. But, I don't remember uh, either. Yeah. But. I was like, okay, ho hum, whatever. And I know Camus won it a few years ago, and then you know Seton Catholic actually won it two years ago. But, but um, yeah, we had two teams win it this year: Camus and Seton Catholic. Camus for four A, Seton Catholic for one A, and then Columbia River. I reported was third because all I was looking at just what the lists on the WIA. But Tony pointed out that the, the, they they have the second most points, so why weren't they second? Yeah. I think it was so they might have finished second instead of third. But either way, Unless, or sorry, the, Columbia the River. opposite way. Who knows what yeah, WIA yeah, how but, they posted that? The, but, yeah, there yeah. was a, there was a miscue on that. So so anyway, but the Scholastic Cup is actually kind of cool. They take points for how each team finishes in state competition. Mm-hmm. So you get hundred points if you win a state title. So Camus girls, what Camus golf, and Cam, I can't remember. Camus tennis, so, so, and then they also give points for your academic record, um, mm-hmm. which, by the way, I, <laughs> it's going to sound terrible. <laughs> I don't care. About, I don't care as much about the academic record because I also know that I, I've seen some teams fudge the numbers with academic. You you can't fudge who wins the football game. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you can fudge your academic record. Kale and Tony. Paul. I'm not saying you would ever do that. These guys would never do that, but. That's that's offensive. Paul. That's offensive. You, think you mean they only would count fudge their academic. They only count the ten, <laughs> if, the ten football kids. If there's only, yeah, if they, ooh, that kid, we're moving them to JV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's twelve kids on the basketball team, but there might only be eight that are counted for your academic. So anyway, I'm not a big fan of the the way they do academic championships around here. But hey, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it's still pretty cool. They do that, and uh, yeah, when it was all said and done, Camus was by far the best. 
4A program in the state. They won by a mile in the points thing. Yeah. Um, but they also do – they subtract points for poor sportsmanship, and we'll get to that in a minute because we assume none of our schools are really high with bad sports. But I guess – yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. But, but yeah, Camus winning that, winning it and then Seton Catholic for 1A. Uh, your, your thoughts as, as a former athletic director of a school and now an athletic director of all schools and then former athletic director. What, your thoughts on what that would be like to, to win that thing, to win the Scholastic Cup? Oh, I mean, it's a cool deal. I mean, it, you're, you're, it, it speaks to the overall quality of your athletic department. Um, and, uh, at, you know, that, that includes the academics. I right? know it does. Right? Know. Right? But, <laughs> but, but, yeah, it, uh, you know, it, it does. It, in fact, uh, we never wanted a union, but, I mean, it was something that we, that we, we uh, were striving for. And I don't believe – I don't know that we had it when I was at Evergreen. I don't I – don't yeah. really, I, I think it was later that it came in, but it's uh, – yeah, it's just a, a pretty cool incentive and measuring stick for the just the overall quality of, of a school's athletic department. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ditto. I th- that's why I like it. It's just a, you know, it's based on that NCAA. Is it what do they call it? The Champions Cup? Something like that. Yeah. You know, and that's where you know Stanford and Cal because of all the Olympic sports, they just clean up in that. Yeah. But right. w- w- what I was thinking when I sent that to you guys though is just the the quality of the teams in our county. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again. And it wasn't that long ago where, you know, and again, Scott Thompson and I, when I ran into him at graduation, he, we talked about this. You know, obviously he won the, uh, the Camus girls yeah. basketball title this year. Scott Thompson, girls basketball coach at yes. Camus. Thank you. I'm yep. presuming everybody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there was a time when, and, and Kel kind of alluded to this, like if a big school in the county just could get there. Mm-hmm. Right, like, hey, congrats, like, mm-hmm. you know, because I can remember the year River and Mountain View made it mm-hmm. to, oh, you just, you made it to the Dome. Right? I mean, and not not to d- dis- distract from that or take away from that, but now, I mean, just in the, the 20 years since then, I mean, now we're playing for titles, the big right. schools, and right. that's just, yeah. and so, well, we, super we, important. Yeah. We think of football as kind of leading the way. So, you had 95, you had Evergreen make it to the semifinals. 95, I think it was? Yep. yep. And then it didn't happen again for Clark County until 2001 and two with Mountain View, and then three and four with Evergreen. And then since then, it doesn't happen every year, but there's not a six year gap. You know what I mean? It's no, it's not, a, it's, right. not a, it's not a shocker when it's it happens. It's not a shocker now. when it happens now. And it used to be a shocker yes. when it happened. Yeah. When Mountain View went back to back, that was a big deal. Huge deal. <laughs> and uh, so, so, and then that. And then that carries over to other sports now, too. And, yes. you know, we have some soccer programms and volleyball, Columbia River Volleyball, oh, my gosh, and, and Ridgeville Volleyball right. mm-hmm. in the same league. They're the, who, you know, <laughs> hey, who, whoever's the best is going to win state and whoever isn't going to be for second. That's right. what's been going on right. for, forever now. So uh, what a, it's just an incredible time for athletes in southwest Washington. And, and the Scholastic Cup thing does bring attention to that. So that's kind of cool. But uh, part of that thing is, yeah, they, I, I didn't realize this. They subtract points. For bad sportsmanship, meaning ejections, and yep. that's all throughout the whole state. So there is somebody recording all the ejections. Well, then, you have to report those. Yes. Yeah. So you, as athletic, as yep. athletic administrators, you know when your school screws up, or your schools, in your case, Kale, you know when your schools get ejected. Yep. I get an you email. Get, I was you get an say, email. You get a report. <laughs> you do with Fort. Well, there's a lot of people emailed. That's know, the unfortunate yes. thing. You're <laughs> not. A, you're not even the athletic director at Fort, but you probably are aware. I actually, well. I don't happen. get the I don't get that initial report anymore. But, but you'll yes. hear about it in yeah. a meeting or whatever. Yep. And so yeah, it's it's no fun. You know, where the adults have to figure out how to how to help and teach, educate the youngsters, but also discipline the youngsters when they mm. do this. Some, sometimes it's the adults who get ejected. Yeah, so no, don't, don't forget too. that. That's true too. <laughs> and then you have to. That's yeah. that's that's a real problem when yeah. that's happening. Yeah. So, but from what I've heard, and you can confirm. The ejections statewide are on a rise. Uh, on a rise. Yeah, basically okay. across the board, everything's the up board. this year. Yep. So I was just wondering your guys' expert opinion. I love calling you guys experts. Thank you. <laughs> expert opinions. It's on- the only time today that's going to happen. <laughs> why, why is it? <laughs> yeah. Or this, that's, this that's year. Right, we're that's about to go home. And that's not happening there, right? <laughs> is, it just, is it just a one-off or is this just a trend? Um, you know, it's hard to compare year to year because, you know, you're different kids and, and different coaches and, and, and whatnot, but, um, it's a troubling trend. Uh, it's a trend that you don't like to see when, you know, we've, we've, and I'll use this term again, we use it all the time in here, it's education-based athletics. Yep. So we're not just about wins and losses and, and we're about growing kids and, and, and adults for that matter, uh, in a positive fashion. So, 
Yeah, I mean that that is a little bit troubling um, that we've seen. And the, the the problem with it is I don't know if there's a way to diagnose, you know, why this year was different than than past years. I'm sure the WI is going to dig into the data, and and there will be some. Um, things that they will try to put in place. And there are some things they're already trying to put in place. You know, we t- we've talked a little bit about the, the I guess, the ref cam, for, for mm-hmm. lack of a better way to yeah. describe that, that in those situations and in the contests where those were used, um, there we, basically we didn't see any ejections. Um, so it just – it, it I, don't, I don't know for a fa- – definitely we didn't – I don't believe that we saw any coach ejections. Okay. Um, I don't know about kids for sure, mm-hmm. but – I mean, there is something that that is makes people think twice on how they're going to behave when I turn I turn my camera on and everything you're doing is going to be recorded and mm-hmm. uh, you're going to have to go back and look at that. Right. Hey, by the way, the coaches and athletes know that the officials. Yeah. That well, they're, they're told before the game that yeah right. I mean, that, that, that that is that, interesting that, that <laughs> those cameras and and like I said, the, just the the overall sportsmanship in those contests, according to what you the feedback you get from WIA, was that, that things were. Uh, markedly better when the when the cameras are being used. Mm-hmm. Tony, your thoughts? Well, on- I think you know there's always the the other side of that, and I'm, there's so many factors of when a coach or a kid gets kicked out, mm-hmm. and and I, I'm not discounting that there are, there there's bad sportsmanship, but sometimes we, especially in the county, we have lost some veteran officials mm-hmm. that I'm not saying they accepted it, but they were willing to you know, work with the coach a little bit differently than I think some of the newer officials. Okay. Um, you know, that they're willing to, again, not accept poor behavior, but they're going to use it, as Kel said, yeah. a teaching moment. Right. This is why we don't do it. And I think now um, there's an emphasis um, that you're just going to be thrown out. Well, and there's, I mean, even there, there's an art to it for an official to uh, maybe go, especially when it's about a kid. Go to a coach and go. Hey, you need to get twenty two out of the game. Yep. Otherwise, uh, you're going to miss ha- them next we're, time. We're going to yeah. have some problems here. You right. know, right. and I don't think that happens a, a lot anymore. And yeah. I, well, I worked with, and then I was, uh, you know, kind of a one of the greatest head coach talkers of all time. I'm not going to get into it, but you guys know who I'm probably referring to, mm-hmm. right? And he, but he, the, the officials worked with him, and he worked with the officials. It was never personal. The head was down. You know, there was an art form to it. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm not saying that that didn't cross the line sometimes, but well, and there, there's there's another aspect. I mean, you say veteran officials. It's also with veteran coaches because I know as a young coach, for me, um, the longer I coached, uh, the the better I figured out how to work with officials. Right. And right. you know, as whereas when you're a younger coach, you're just you you might just get ticked about something, and you want to make sure that they know you're not happy with that call. Whereas the older you get, the more you realize, hey, this is kind of a a give and take, and there's there's a relationship there, and so more having just a conversation around. Hey, I, you know, I, I don't really understand that, that. Are you sure about that call? You know, right. as opposed to it's all in the delivery, and then yes. and and then how you're having how you're having that conversation. <laughs> Correct. But that's what I mean, um, right? There's not with them. Yeah. I get and you know, Paul, um, about ten or twelve years ago, maybe a little bit longer. That's when the state noticed an uptick in soccer player ejections, mm-hmm. and then they brought in all those different. Soccer management, and they're up again know. now this year. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that. It's, it's, so, but soccer in WIA soccer, it's 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 managed well. To an, I mean, it mm-hmm. has more um, policies than uh, other sports. I think. Right. I right. haven't counted, but it seems like they're they're pretty mm-hmm. regular. Anyway, but it's kind of like uh, what you're talking about officiating. So, I mentioned is this leading? You know, we know in the last few years. Uh, uh, older officials are getting out and they're having a hard time recruiting new officials. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the new officials that are coming in are less experienced. So is it the chicken or the egg first type of yeah. thing of what, what's causing this? But yeah. the point is if the ejections are up, that means poor sportsmanship is generally, you know, that's the, that's one of the way you can rank sportsmanship and poor sportsmanship. Right. And if that keeps getting going the wrong direction, we're going to have less and less Officials and and Kel might be yeah. able to even I'm sure the WA tracks it is you know which official has the most ejections. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they you know, would have that data. They for would, sure. and so that's for where sure. I would want to see that as well. Right. You know, as an as an AD, I would want to know working with District Four, like if we're going to make this a statewide 
issue and mm-hmm. um you know then let's look at these guys yeah. because what if official John Doe has 3 years of experience versus the guy with 15 years experience doesn't have as many ejections well just or whatever yeah. right and you know on on Twitter or on social media that especially in baseball when the umpire just takes over right the the hashtag the ump show or yeah. ump show right? right there are you just don't want that right and I, I, and, I, I, and it can't be argued we, that, I mean, we definitely, and it's not just a Clark County or, or a state of Washington. I mean, across the country, this, the the level of official abuse. Yes. Um, and I don't know if it was another symptom of COVID and, and I, you know, people just being angry in general. I don't know. But um, the abuse that that officials are subjected to, and it's not just by coaches and players, it's by people in the stands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I think in, in the, this, this, just this mentality that, look, I bought my ticket. I can say whatever I want to about an official at an event. And um, I know we have, as a district, we have had um, more issues this year with um, game management and mm-hmm. having to deal with not necessarily kids, but adults who are at games uh, and are writing officials, um, so much to the point where now I, I've added it'll be part of our clearance process next year. But it, we have a we've we've got a fan code of conduct now that as a parent you have to sign. Um, not as that part it's, of the clearance packet is correct. That what you said? Yeah, okay. our, part of our clearance process and it's all online now. But you're going to have to sign that to clear your student athlete for a sport. Not that that's necessarily going to change the behavior, but it gives us something to go back to and say, "Look, you signed this agreement right. when you when you cleared your kid, and not only do we do we put in there for you, but any guests that you bring to the game, because um, we do need to do something about um, how how our our, our our officials are treated, uh, because um, as you, lo- I mean, we are our, our we just we need to fill the coffers, and, and people, you know, I uh, think that we're, I mean, we all knew officials who had been officiating sports here in Clark County for years. Mm-hmm. And, and oftentimes it was multiple sports, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so I just feel like for me, when I go to games now, I see a lot of new faces. and But then I feel like the next year I see a lot of new faces again. Right. And yeah. so that tells you that just the retention rate isn't, isn't great. And the other on the flip side of that, we also see a lot of the same faces that probably shouldn't be officiated anymore. Yeah. Guys who actually did retire, but were talked into, and I'm, I'm not going to mention <laughs> names, but there yeah. were a couple of guys that have, I know of at least one football guy who retired, and then the very next year he was back on there in week one because the association said, we don't have enough officials. Would you please come out? Yeah. And I'm not even saying they're bad officials. I'm just saying that they're much, much older now. Even a couple in basketball, it's like, you know, that's no, not you, a, that's you, not a young man's game to be in a basketball no, and, official. And if you if you put in <laughs> I mean, your time, I'm sorry, uh, it's not an old man. It's it is yes. a young man's game, is what I meant. To none say. of none of our <laughs> high school officials are doing it because it's lucrative, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, right. They, they want they want to stay involved in the sport and give back to the sport <laughs> and be involved in the community right. and and it's a, it's also a competitive thing for them, right? They want to get rated out well and get big games and be able to do playoff games and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, nobody goes into officiating high school sports because. Um, they, yeah, they're gonna, looking to buy a beach house. Yeah, or something. no, that, yeah. That, that, that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, they gotta they gotta go into admin. Oh, 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 sorry. oh, oh dang. I always, I always wow. do a little dig. At that, that. He, he does do that <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I want you guys to buy me Burger Bill one day, hey, so I better be nice. We're not, sorry. we're not, we're not the, we're not the guys with season Raider tickets yeah. who I know, are this down in Vegas <laughs> every other week. Come on now, you know how cheap it is to get to Vegas <laughs> and you got all the rewards. Sure, but I don't go every ten days either. So okay. <laughs> All right, touche. I guess I deserve that. But, uh, my, my wife works for the mortgage and bills. I just work for Raider tickets. That's, that's uh, okay. Uh, Understandable. Yeah. And and uh, I always tell every we, we me and my wife love making fun of anybody with more than one child, which you two have uh, more than one yes, child. Yes, yes. We're 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 we have one child, and uh, and. Uh, <laughs> they, I'm those, just saying that the budget goes is a little bit easier with only one child. Those little buggers can be expensive, <laughs> yeah, especially that's when for they're sure. in college. That's, so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so, that, that tuition. Yeah. Is... All right. So speaking of staying in sports, like these officials want to stay in sports, we'll, we'll go. We'll go. Kara Winger uh, used to be. You know, we knew her as Kara Patterson in high school, but that was so long ago. She's been married forever. But Kara Winger, Skyview High School legend. She, uh, by the way, she was in town last week. 
um, gave a key- keynote address at a pretty special event that uh, I am going to applaud my former employees. Yeah, that's a cool event. Um, so uh, Tim and Micah, Meg, Will, and Jeff, uh, I'm just going to say congratulations. Uh, what was the that, official that was name the, of it? I don't know, and I'm not going to say the official name because that would – no, I'm kidding. Oh. I don't, well, I don't know what the name was. Something all region. The, or... the Columbian did a big sports – it's yeah. almost like the sports ESPYs. Of yeah, Clark local County ESPYs kind of, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but Kara was the, gu- the guest speaker. And um, and anyway, I, first of all, I will say congratulations to to my old co- to my to my old colleagues. Um, that that's a great idea, and I and I hope it went well. I know it's hard to put on a show like that, but back to Kara. She <laughs> announced that she's unretiring. She uh, the four time Olympian javelin thrower from Skyview has unretired, and then that week or last week she. Did something you know, again? I'm not a track and field expert, and to know now, which, when are the track and field trials? That's well, what I was going to ask. Well, Got to be soon, but she qualified for the trials in Perfect. one event, and if she makes it to the Olympics, that'll be five time Olympian. That's so crazy. That and she's nuts. from Vancouver, and she's still the American record holder for yeah for javelin. And I don't so, know if people realize how hard that is. And I and I got two. So she was also a, she was a three sport athlete in high in high school, and um, I still remember she was a swimmer, but. Swim, yeah, swimming and then basketball. But uh, I, it's funny the stuff that you get criticized for and you remember in my world. It, <laughs> we were doing this little fun little notes on high school sports. And at one point, you know, she grabbed a rebound. She was playing basketball and she grabbed a, re, a defensive rebound and the clock was going out. So she one hands the basketball to throw it full court, trying to get trying to beat the clock sure. at the end of a quarter. And the ball flies over the backboard and just slams into the wall <laughs> at Skyview High School. <laughs> And so I wrote a story about she forgot which sport she was playing because I mean she just she threw the javelin. She threw, yeah, she, this basketball. I mean, it might have caused a dent. And I mean, of course, I hyperbole. Hyperbole. It's it's fun to do. But anyway, it was just a fun little story. And someone said, "Oh, you you know, quit." You know, someone wrote me an email or or maybe even an old fashioned letter back then. I don't know, but it just uh, just wrote, "Oh, come on, leave it, leave it to basketball. Who cares about you know? Don't don't switch." It was just such a funny criticism. That's why I always remember it. Because yeah, yeah. Why what, are you why are you kidding? This is a so what, what or year? What, what year was that? That must have been her. Well, I don't know if it's a junior year or senior year, but I'm trying to think of. She was early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say yeah. 2000. So basically, Paul's. Skyview hatred goes. Yo, it goes oh, way no. back. Oh. It goes way back. Taking shots Man, at Kaiser's. Skyview athletes. Oh. Sky- I was not taking. <laughs> That's funny. I guess Man. Kale wrote the letter. Yes. Uh. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, yeah. Quit ripping uh. on Skyview athletes. Kale Violet. <laughs> yeah. uh. So anyway, I. But but I I'll always remember her from Kara, and I've talked to her many. I've interviewed her many many times, um, including when she retired, and now she's unretired. So I'm, I have to. Call call her again after this after this summer Olympics if she makes it, but um, it was just one of those things that she was an athlete and she wanted to go out for spring sport and track and field, but she didn't she'd never thrown the javelin before. Wow! And I think it was oh boy, forgive me if it's not, but I think it was Coach Ron Heidenreich. Did you, did you ever? Uh, yes, he was her head boys track or girls track coach. For and I time. believe or he talked her in freshman year. Yeah. I think you should try this, and she's like. She's like, really? You want me to try this? Throw a stick? And, you know, I, right. I'm paraphrasing again, kind of her attitude back. Javelin, then. yeah. And then she did it, and I think she became a three-time state champion. Went to Purdue, got her degree at Purdue, and the college champion, and then American Here we record are. holder. And it's changed her life. She's a possibly a five-time Olympian. That's incredible. And I, what it I is. love about it is, is just if you're an athlete, just go out for sports. A good coach is going to yeah. find yes. a spot it's for you. It's a good you. point. Yep. You know, you you might think you're a, a wide receiver, but you're six foot six, and you've got some muscle on you, and white. And your coach might say, "I think you might be a guard, or you might be a tackle." There's and, so much data out there that just shows that the multi-sport athlete, yeah. um, over and know, over, I mean, just, gonna, just is, is benefits yeah. from all of it. And you're you're exactly right, Paul. I mean, so when you see kids, and and quite honestly, the the adults have done it to the kids because with, with the, the um, I guess the level that club sports are at right now, right, and and how young we we get into that, and, and kids are specializing at such a young age. I mean, I can think of, well, heck, even for myself, I, it, when I was even like sixth grade, seventh grade, um, 
you know, I, I mean, I thought I was going to the NBA, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, but then, but then I, and I obviously became, as I got older, it was, you know, I, I did play high school basketball, but, but football was really where I was going to excel. Mm -hmm. But had I just put, if I just said I was going to be like a lot of kids do in today's day and age, they, right. they just, at a young age, they say, I'm putting, I'm just going to do this. Um, you know, you, you, um, you just you can end up missing out on an opportunity like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and if she had said, "Well, if she's focusing on swimming or basketball, no, I'm not going out for track. I need to focus on these other things." Well, what, I mean, you just you would have thrown away an Olympic career, right? right? Yeah. So, I mean, you just you just never know, right? And sometimes you got to let the coaches go. Mm, sometimes the coaches do know best, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I've got my I got an old friend from high school went nine years in the NFL, but he he was convinced he was a tight end, and his you know, our varsity high school coach said, sophomore year, yeah, you can be my tight end, yeah. play on the JV, or you can be my left tackle right now. Yep. Virtually <laughs> every high school offensive lineman thinks they're a tight end. Yes. Correct. Just, yeah. just so yeah. you know that. But, but he said, if you want to be, you could, you could be on the JV team all year long, catch five passes. <laughs> We don't have yeah. tight ends. <laughs> yes. That's, there's that now, too. No. Sorry. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I had to have a conversation with a kid who was a, a fullback as, as a, or a run, even just a running back as a ninth grader on the freshman team. I'm like, well, you look pretty good as a guard, yeah. and you're, you're going to get to play quite a mm -hmm. bit more. And some kids had a hard time hearing that, but then we, right. but a lot of kids didn't. And then all of a sudden, you know, that, that they realized, yeah, this is. I'm looking at the tailback. Yeah, that, that's not me. I'm. This is where I belong. So, uh, coaches typically don't yeah. ask uh, star tailbacks to move positions. No, if uh, I can beat you in the race, yeah. you're not our starting running back. Y yes, yes. So my my anyway, my friend ended up nine years in the NFL. Yeah, that's great. And um, played played. For University of Washington, only started one year because he was behind Lincoln Kennedy for the first three years. Oh, no. <laughs> so sure, pretty, pretty one of those, still, but yes. still pretty, pretty darn awesome. An NFL you know. Hall of Famer, but, and yeah. this is a guy who, yeah, you know, and and that. And so I just I think of him, or I think I'll, there's a lot of stories like that. But I just love that Kara listened to her coach and said, "Yeah, I'll give it a shot," <laughs> and it changed yeah. her life for the better. Yeah, that's I awesome. Love that. So, all right, now I know you guys. Have to talk about your Mariners because <laughs> it's very rare that we can talk about the Mariners in first place, and it's not April fifth. We can talk about the Mariners as Dang, long. It's as last little dig there. Yeah, well, no. just has to get it I was, in. I was helping. I, I just yes. Yeah, thank playing. you. I'm kind <laughs> of immune to it now, though. You know, it's, I, like, it's like a it's like, it's like the coach who yells all the time. It, it loses effectiveness. <laughs> See, from, not eventually. me. It's cutting deep. <laughs> That's why I pointed out. Well, I was going to say, yeah, we could we could talk about the Mariners as long as they're not going to play the Kansas City Royals. That's uh, no, you know. I will apologize to Mariner fans, you two right here, and yeah. all Mariner fans listening. It is my fault they blew a seven or eight nothing lead, whatever it was. The yeah, other it was day. nine one, a seven so, seven zero. Then so, yeah, because I have that pitcher for the Mariners on my fantasy team. If me too, though I have if, him too, then, so yeah, it wasn't but you. But it's my and fault three. because I'm telling you, it's my fault because I, I I saw the score and I went, cool, that's going to be a win. No, it's my fault. It's it's not. Oh. You guys, it, it, if 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 this guy wasn't on my fantasy team, he would have thrown a no hitter that day. <laughs> well, he's going tonight, so I will oh. let you know. Well, I guarantee you. If, if, if I don't know if, if I took you. him out of my lineup out of spite, I don't know. I'm well, just, I hope just you trade him. Just trade him. If he's still in my lineup, I guarantee you he's going to blow up and do do bad. Great. I can't remember. Well, I can't remember. I'll no, be uh, texting yeah. you during the game. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it is it yeah, seriously though, you know. I, I'm hoping to one day know remember what it's like to be in first place late in the season for a Raider fan. 2016 was the last time, yeah. and then our quarterback broke his leg. So, yes. <laughs> so and uh, but um, it's been a while. I I, I, I could imagine. What, where are we now? Are we a? Th we're about a third. Third of the season. Yeah, a little, little over. A little, yeah. little over third. third. Yeah. yeah, I would. I would take four and one for the Raiders and being in first place Absolutely. by two games. Or no, two games. And as Tony can <laughs> attest to too, there's been a, a uh, number of uh, a copious quantity of Mariner seasons. One might say where already we were like, oh, forget this year, it's it's, it's right. done, right? So <laughs> like last year uh, at this time. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, I know you made a run. It was just weird. It was a rough. Yeah, yeah. there were 500 for yeah, a lot yeah, of the yeah, yeah. yeah. summer. But there've been a lot of years early. where it's just like you get in, you just got you're excited, and I think this is gonna. And then no. Right. Okay, well, so. what is it? It's, it's June 12th, so the June swoon hasn't happened yet. That's no, they so they have actually played pretty well. The, yeah. And for about almost. Two months. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So. Uh, now, now we just need uh, Jerry to uh, do what he's got to do. Just one more bat. That's, I say that every year, but literally this year they need just one more bat. 
One more bat. Yep. Maybe. And ownership has said, no, I don't know if I believe them. Well, <laughs> ownership <laughs> has said. There was always that qualifier, we will help, but it's like we were talking about Biggio before. It's the yeah. guy that got DFA'd two weeks yes. before, and yes. like, oh, now you're a Seattle Mariner. Yeah. yeah. So it didn't happen, but yeah, it yes. no, but Victor good, Robles yeah. happened uh, a week right. or so Victor before. Robles. Yeah. So, so, all right. So, um, but hmm. the difference with Victor Robles is Jesse he wasn't Baker. a failed relief was a pitcher or a utility infielder because that that's kind of Jerry's specialty. <laughs> the other utility infielder. <laughs> yes. Can you play third or short or second? <laughs> we want uh, you. How do you feel about getting in, mixing in the outfield out there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. There you go. Anyway, so, uh, hey, uh, throughout, I guess we should talk about. The summer we haven't even talked about this in you know, we didn't in our pregame we didn't talk about this. This is true. This uh, last summer we wanted to get together every couple of weeks or every three weeks yeah. to you know and we still can but but we do want all three of us together and it's tougher because you guys get out of town when you can because yep. it's your your downtime and um, and then shoot I, I mean I go I go places here and there so we're gonna just uh, we'll, we'll 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 get together when we can and we hope then to not. To not have a two month break. In my, in, in, oh, my, we won't. in my family, we call that piping it. <laughs> Play it by ear. Play it by ear. We're going to pipe this. Pipe it. Okay. I like Play that. Play it by ear. I like, yeah, that is pretty cool. All right. you, you, you just started something, Gail. Oh, it's going to spread across the county now. Hashtag pipe. Pipe. Play <laughs> it by ear. But, so I don't know how, yeah, but. But we'll, we'll come back and we'll have plenty of subject, even if it's a you know, a, well, we got a football short, previews. A shorter episode. Yeah. We can do football previews and we can talk about. Uh, yeah, all that there'll be stuff. stuff. There'll be stuff happening. Hey, there and, always is. And on a personal note, hopefully, and the next time we do this podcast, I will be able to tell you what it's like to be in First Avenue while the Revolution are playing. Oh yeah, Prince that's music. oh yeah. Fortieth yeah. anniversary of Purple Rain. Uh, perfect. And my wife and I have tickets for Friday night and Saturday night show. Are they different uh, on the, set lists? I don't think so. I don't, okay, you I don't just know. want to go that badly. I don't care. Right? Okay. Well, the, the funny thing, well, it's, uh, yeah, we'll get it. I, yeah. we, this, the Saturday show, we might be able to change our tickets and go see Morris Day and the New Power Generation. Mm. It's, it's a really weird. Morris it, Day and the New Power? Morris Day is and the Time are playing and the Power oh. Generation are playing. Separate, I thought you meant he's like, so, yeah, so, okay. Separate, so, but, uh, but they're, yeah, anyway, it's it's a big Prince celebration. Is, sure. Uh, you know, it's the, around the 40th anniversary of the greatest album ever made. Purple Rain. It, where was it? Was that number four on the Rolling Stone? I think it was number four on the Rolling Stone because, uh, you know, I don't know, they got hit in the head or something. It should have been <laughs> number one. What was one? I forgot. I, I don't, well, number one is Purple Rain. So whatever they said, it was, I don't know. But <laughs> I was surprised by one. Now I got to look it up. I, yeah. Okay. I won't do it this we'll second. Figure, we'll figure it out. Because Abbey Road was three. Anyway, and usually will, they're very I, I Beatle will, friendly. I will uh, I will absolutely tell you how, how it goes on the next podcast because uh, we, we are planning to go to Minneapolis for that weekend. Very cool. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll be back when we're back.